Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? What sayest thou? He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. thine accusers. Hath no man condemned thee? Our television broadcast featuring Jacqueline Stewart, First Lady of the Axe Ministries, and now Lady Stewart. Welcome back to our Words to Empower broadcast. We're going to be continuing in the book of St. John, Chapter 8. We've been talking about freedom and we want to continue along this vein and go into what Jesus moves into, not just talking about freedom, when the scripture says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We talked about truth alone cannot free us, but we have to know the truth in order to be set free. And so we want to go to the scripture right now and read St. John chapter 8, and we're going to start reading around verse 12 first. And before we go there, let's set this scene up. Jesus has just been brought a woman who's taken in adultery. She's been caught in the very act by the scribes and the Pharisees. They have brought this woman to Jesus and he, they tell him, now you know that the law of Moses teaches us that this woman should be stoned to death. What do you say? They're bringing her to Jesus because they want Jesus to be stoned. They want the, the crowd and those who are following Jesus to reject him and they want him to be um, put in prison. They want, they want some things to happen to Jesus negatively. And so they bring this woman to Jesus to try to trap him in his words. And when they bring her to him, they say, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. Now, what do you say we should do? Because the, the law of Moses teaches us that we're supposed to stone this woman. Now, Jesus, he stoops down and he begins to write on the ground and he begins to just um, write in the dust. And he doesn't say a word to them. And so they're waiting on him to, to react and to say something. And he gives them a chance to kind of calm down and think about what they've just done and what they've said to him. And when Jesus um, looks at the woman who, he, who they brought into um, his midst, um, he, he, they, they tempt him and he looks at her and he looks back at them and he's writing, you know, in the dust. 
Now, some say he's probably writing, you know, from the book of Deuteronomy, he's probably writing, you know, um, about how the law commands that you're not supposed to just bring one party who's caught in adultery. You're supposed to bring both. If they're caught in the very act, she has to be caught in the act with someone else, with another partner. And they only bring her. So they have broken the law by only bringing her by herself. So Jesus looks up and he says to them, as he, you know, he continues to write on the ground. And he says to them in verse seven. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin, let him cast the first stone at her. Now he gives them the opportunity to examine themselves. And to see if they've done justly, if they've done righteously, if they've done like Micah said, if they've um, loved the Lord and, and they've done what he, they've been asked. And so one by one, they walk out until there's no one else left but the woman standing there with Jesus. And Jesus looks up at her and he says, woman, where are thou accusers? Where are the people who have accused you? And she says, there's no one here, Lord. And he says, neither do I. Neither do I accuse you. But he says to her, go and sin no more. And immediately after that, Jesus begins to talk about truth. And this is where we want to pick up our lesson today. You know, sometimes we have a partial truth. Sometimes we have only what one person or a group of people are saying to us. And that may be their truth for that moment or their facts for the moment. But it's not the truth. And so we pick up in St. John chapter 8, verse 12 today, and it reads um, for us today. It says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall live the light of life, and shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I've come, and whether I go, but ye cannot tell whence I've come, and whether I go. You don't know where I've come from, and you don't know where I'm going, Jesus is saying. He says, Ye judge after the flesh, and Jesus says, I judge no man. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. And it is also written in your law that the testimony of two of two men is true. And I am one that beareth witness of myself and the father that sent me beareth witness of me. And they said unto him, where is thy father? Jesus said, ye neither know my father nor me. He says, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And these are the words that Jesus spake while he was in the treasury in the temple. Um, and no man laid hands on for his hour has not come. And before we skip down to, to verse 23, let's kind of talk about um, this passage of scripture where the Pharisees and, and those who accuse Jesus, when Jesus, you know, begins to tell them that he is the light of the world. Light, truth, freedom. These things are all synonymous with each other and they go hand in hand and are parallel with one another. You cannot have truth without having light. Light brings truth. The Bible says the entrance of thy word bringeth light. And when he said his word is true, he's saying, I am that light. I am that revelation that you're looking for. I am what you seek, what you're seeking after. And so Jesus begins to tell them, he is the light of the world. And he that follows me will not walk in darkness. And when we begin to follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we begin to follow wholeheartedly with a, a pure and honest heart, what God has commanded us, we're able to walk in the light as it's revealed unto us. And walking in light is better than walking in darkness. Because if you're walking in the darkness, you're going to stumble. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. You're not going to make it to your destination without having some type of illumination and something to light your pathway. I like how the Proverbs writer says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. 
He, he illuminates our paths. He directs our way. He helps establish our going through the word of God. His word brings light to us. And that light helps us to see the truth of God's word. And so Jesus begins to tell them that I am the light. And if you walk with me, you walk in my truth, you walk in my word, you're going to walk in that light. And revelation is going to come to you. Jesus begins to answer them that, you know, he bears record of, of himself and the father bears witness of his record that he is the light, that he is the truth. He is the way. He is the door. He is the life. He is the light. And they began to accuse Jesus and say, your record is not true. And Jesus has to bring the word back to him. The, the word brings light. The word brings revelation. Jesus begins to bring that word back to them and says, your, your word says, your scrolls that you've been reading in the temple, they bear witness to say the, the witness, the record, the testimony of two is true. Now, when you have two witnesses, two eyewitnesses to an account, it's always better than one. But I like how the scripture um, testifies of Jesus, how Jesus testifies of himself, how his father testifies him, of how the Holy Spirit testifies of him. And none other than the forerunner of Jesus Christ, John the Baptist himself, he also testifies to Jesus being that light, being that truth that we're looking for. If we're seeking truth, Jesus has the truth. He says, I am the way and I am the truth. And when we believe that he's the truth, we will walk in truth. We will walk in the light as it's revealed unto us. Now, he told them in verse 15 that you judge after the flesh. He says, but I judge no man. He says, but yet if I do judge my testimony, my judgment, my, what I say is true. And when we can adhere to the word of God, realizing that his word is true, that he is true. You know, we can look at Jesus and we can look at his life, his lifestyle, how he presented truth unto everyone he came in contact with. He even brought truth to Pilate, even as Pilate was getting ready to send him to the cross and to have him crucified just by hearing what the people were saying unto him. He asked Jesus when Jesus told him, you know, my record is true. I bear witness to the truth that I am the truth. Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Jesus says, I am the way and I am the truth. And when you understand that his, he is the word manifest in the flesh, that he is that truth that God has sent unto us, you realize that when I follow him, I'm following truth. When I follow the Lord Jesus Christ, I realize I have reached another dimension of what real truth is. And so just listening to one person's word or what one person says about an incident or individual or an event, it's not enough. But what does God say about it? What does God say about whatever it is that we're seeking and wanting to know? And so when we dive into God's word, he tells us to buy the truth and sell it not. The book of Proverbs, he teaches us to buy the truth. Well, how do we buy truth? And then how do we not sell it? Dealing with the first part of buying the truth. Thy word is truth, O God. And when we realize he says that his word is truth, we buy his word. Whenever someone says something to us, we're either buying the truth or we're buying a lie. We're either buying what God says or we're buying something that he did not say. So he wants us to buy his word, buy the truth and sell it not. So, so as we look at the scripture, we want to just, you know, meditate on how, what have we been buying? What have we been actually purchasing in our spiritual lives? We'll be back right after this for this message. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. 
then click Donate Online. That will take you to the main page where you will find a couple of options. You can quick give where no login is required. Simply fill in a few bits of information and it's that easy. Just add your donation amount and which fund, add your credit card or debit card information, then hit submit and you're all done. There are even greater benefits to using Simple Give. As a first time user, you can register, put in a few of your own personal contact details, and that fast, in less than a minute, you are all registered. Your email address will become your user ID. And after creating your own unique password, you will have access to all the benefits and conveniences of online giving. You can make your ties and donation offerings using your credit or debit card information. And for added convenience, you can do an e-check which will directly debit from your personal bank account. Simply add your donation amount including your routing and bank account information. Complete the short form and hit authorize. You're done. And just that easy, your ties have been paid without a trip to the bank, all securely and free of charge to you. And now there's even more greater reasons to register, like scheduled giving. You can schedule your ties and offerings to be paid automatically with the frequency which you choose. Just like the bills you pay online, no more having to remember to pay your ties, even if you're on vacation or just for the convenience of it. You can set up your account to automatically debit from your credit or debit card or your bank account. Again, you choose the frequency of how often you donate. Bi-monthly, monthly, weekly, bi-weekly, or however often you choose. The number of installments you'd like and the start date you'd like your scheduled donations to begin. And all that can be done at any time with no contract. Welcome back to the Words to Empower broadcast. We were discussing buying and selling the truth. Now, you may ask, how does one buy the truth? And the Word of God says, thy word is true. And when we buy, when we purchase, the truth, when we believe what God says, we're actually buying the truth. We're actually receiving what God has said and his word is true. Now, sometimes you think about purchasing or buying things at a store or online. When we do that, we it's an exchange there. It's something that we, um, we give and we receive. We give finances, we receive products, we receive something. And so when we buy the truth of God's word, we receive the freedom that we're looking for. We receive the healing that we're looking for. We receive the freedom that God has for us. When you actually purchase and buy the truth, it comes with the blessings of God. It comes with God opening up the windows of heaven and pouring us out blessings that we don't even have room enough to receive. So I admonish everyone, I encourage you to start purchasing more of God's truth. Start diving into God's word. Start exploring God's word and seeing what the promises of God are for each and every one of us in all of our lives. And as we begin to see what God says and we begin to believe what God says, we're making an exchange. We're putting our trust and our confidence in God and he's rewarding our belief. He's rewarding our faith and our trust in him with the blessings of God. And so when he asked them um, in our scripture today, in our lesson in St. John chapter eight, when he, when he, when Jesus actually tells the scribes and the Pharisees and the doctors of the law and those who, who tell him that his word's not true, that he's bearing record of himself, Jesus has to let them know, you know, he's not just speaking on his own accord, but he's saying that, that the Father has spoken unto him. Let's jump down now to verse number 23 of St. John chapter 8. And when we go down to this verse, he says, um, basically, to the, to the scribes and the Pharisees, he says unto them, Ye are from beneath, but I am from above. Ye are of this world, and I am not of this world. He says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. If you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And he says this about three times in this um, chapter, that they'll die in their sins if they don't believe that he is the truth, that he has come 
and bears witness of the truth and that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so when we re reject, when we reject what God has said unto us, when we reject the word of God, we're rejecting the truth of God. And he wants us not to reject it, but to believe it and to receive it. And each and every one of us has to make up in our own minds for ourselves. Will we believe God? Someone said, whose report will you believe? Will you believe God or will you believe man? Will you believe God or will you believe the enemy? Will you believe God or will you trust in your own instincts and your own ingenuity, your own intellect? We have to learn how to trust in the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our spirit, with all our being. When we're able to trust God's word, we're able to stand on the promises of God. And when we stand not wavering, when we stand in faith, trusting and believing God, there will be a manifestation of what we're trusting God for. There will be a manifestation of what we're believing God for. And when we believe the truth, there is a freedom like none other that comes from believing God's word and for standing on his word. And I love how Jesus says unto them um, in this same chapter um, he, when he says that, um, in verse 32, he says, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You know, you might feel like these people in St. John chapter eight who began to say to Jesus, we're not in bondage to any man. You know, we haven't been enslaved by anybody. And when they said that to Jesus, they had forgotten their heritage. They had forgotten their history. They had forgotten their situation that they were currently in. Even in in history, they had been in bondage to the Babylonians. They had been in bondage to the Egyptians. They had been in bondage during the time of the judges to the Moabites, the Canaanites, the Amorites. The, the, so many of the Canaanite people they had been in bondage to. They had been captured and been dispersed abroad during the Assyrian captivity, um, been in bondage to the Assyrians, been in bondage, you know, um, in Babylonian, in the Medo-Persian time. They had been in bondage to many people in their past, and they were currently under Roman occupation. The Romans were ruling over them at this current time where they're still saying, we're not in bondage to any, my, any man. Now, being in bondage, sometimes you have to sit back and think before you just blurt out, I'm not in bondage anywhere. Sometimes you have to think about your lifestyle. Think about your, your, where you are in life to, to realize, you know what? I am in spiritual bondage. I am in a financial bondage. I am in relationship bondages. I am in, in emotional bondage. I'm, I'm in psychological bondage. There are so many types of bondage that we can be um, in that unless we think about it, we might think, no, I'm not in bondage, just like these people, these Jews um, in Jesus' day said that they were not in bondage. Sometimes we have to get honest with ourselves and realize, you know what, I am in bondage. And the truth shall make you free. Knowing that truth shall make you free. Because we have to start with the truth. Not just facts. Facts point out things that are there. But when we talk about truth, truth is going to reveal the facts on a different level like never before. And it's all going to come together. Light. Truth brings illumination. Truth brings joy. Truth brings peace. Truth brings the blessings of God when we begin to walk in the truth and desire the truth. And that's one thing we have to develop in our lives is a desire to know the truth. You Have you ever talked to someone and you began to express to them truth and they say, I don't wanna know, the, I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear the truth. I don't wanna know it. Well, not knowing the truth, it's not gonna make the truth go away. Not wanting to hear the truth doesn't dismiss truth, but it holds us at a greater level of accountability when we hear truth, when we know truth, and we don't walk in truth. And so friends, God is wanting us to walk in the truth, walk in the light, walk in the freedom, 
walk in the joy and the blessings that he has for us. And I'm excited today to know that revelation has come to many who are watching this broadcast today to know that I have a to have to de have a desire for that truth. And when I desire the truth, God is going to bring truth my way. When he brings it your way, friend, don't reject it. Don't dismiss it. Don't push it off on someone else. But receive that truth for yourself. Receive that truth and walk in all of it. Because God has a blessing for us when we walk in the truth. And like I said earlier, truth, freedom, all of these things that Jesus has proclaimed, not being in bondage, it comes with us receiving God's truth. Can we pray before we leave the air on today? I want to pray for you that God blesses you to walk in the truth like never before. And for you to realize some places of bondage that you may have not been walking in truth so that God can set you free. Because he told us we shall know the truth and knowing that truth will make us free. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for everyone under the sound of our voice on today. We pray, Lord God, that we receive your word. We want to purchase it. We want to buy the truth of your word, God. And when we purchase it, we want to be able to enjoy the blessings that come that comes with knowing and purchasing and buying the truth. Lord God, bless us, Lord God, not to push it off on someone else. Bless us to receive it in our hearts, our minds, our spirits, and our lives. Lord God, as we go about our daily task, Father, help us to purchase more truth. And as we purchase that truth, help us to share the truth. You said you are the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that as we receive the truth, we receive more of you. As we receive the truth, we're receiving more of your word, God. Lord God, open us up, Lord. Lord, help us to receive everything that you have for us. And we'll be careful to give your name, praise, honor, and glory. Bless us in this walk of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time on The Words to Empower. The Axe Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information. We would love you to partner with our ministry please go to our website, axeministriesonline.org, and find out how you can partner with us. For your gifts, please click on the Donate Online button or text the amount you wish to give to 501-302-4242.